Hey everyone and welcome to Fit for Dogs Canine Hydrotherapy Centre Cake with Kirsty. So I'm excited to bring you another amazing e expert to our interview um, and we're going to be talking all about rehab and how it can aid in recovery of your dog and how finding the right team can make a really big difference. Um, so with um, this expert here, Rayanna, um, I'm so excited um, to have her on the show today because she's an amazing expert on complementary therapies such as acupuncture, physio and pain management. Um, and we're just really excited to have you share your knowledge. Um, so it's really good. Thank um, you so much for having me, Kirsty. It's, um, yeah, it's really fantastic just to be able to talk about subjects that we're both so passionate about and work together across disciplines to to promote this this topic so thank you again no that's okay it's great to have you here um and as it is cake with kirsty so i'd just like to ask you what is your favorite cake and what do you have in your mug <laughs> so i've got a cup of tea in my mug <laughs> and, Pardon? What do you have it? Um, I have it quite milky and with a little drop of honey in it as well. So, uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and my favourite cake has to be chocolate cake. So, but the cakes that you gave me this afternoon, whoa, it took so much willpower just to restrain myself from having them all at once. <laughs> so, they are fantastic. I must say, the donuts that you brought us have disappeared. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and Eleanor wants to know where you got them from because she needs some more. <laughs> oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll let her know. <laughs> so you've moved um, to this area recently, uh -huh. and, um, and it's great to have your skills and expertise in this area. Um, so where are you currently working and um, what do you like about this area? Yeah, so um, so kind of my story is that I grew up in Bahrain in the Middle East, and then I came to university, uh, gosh, about 15 years ago, Liverpool Uni, um, and my grandparents were originally from Bridlington, so I grew up coming on hol summer holidays to Bridlington and know the area really, really well, and I did all my vet training and practices around Bridlington, so the current practice that I'm, I'm working at, Algate Veterinary practice is where I did all my vet training as a student so that was about 15 years ago so um, I was living in Bristol um, for the last well last year and just the draws of coming back home really kind of brought me back here and just the fantastic scenery the lovely lovely natured people and um, just having the sea and the countryside so nearby were sort of the things that drew me back uh, to coming here so it's been fantastic and it's just been lovely to Come back to a practice that I've known so well as a as, as a student now as a now as a vet. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm just so glad to be back in this area. Oh, that's really good. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm not from around here, but I have been living here for ten years, which wow. has been reminding myself because obviously I'm originally from New Zealand and uh -huh. I moved over here with my husband because he's from Yorkshire. Sure. Um, so and now we are, you know, we're Yorkshire. No, you're Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, cool. So um, tell us all about what you do and um, about like rehab, because obviously acupuncture is a big part and a lot, a lot of um, people probably haven't heard about it or um, anything like that. So I'd be really yeah, sure. nice to know okay. more about acupuncture. Mm -hmm. So acupuncture, it's the practice of inserting really fine solid needles into the body and that's for the purpose of providing pain relief and in some cases just to help the body kind of normalise itself and with other diseases such as inflammatory bowel diseases, skin diseases, all sorts, um, any pet can benefit from having acupuncture if they've got a mobility or if they've got a pain related issue and um, they do need to be referred by their primary care vet like any other service any other referral service so um, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is chronic pain management as well as acupuncture so that means reviewing every single aspect of that pet's life ranging from their nutrition to their lifestyle how they live at home and um, what their what they were like 
prior to the, the presenting problem and how we can rehabilitate them up to, to, to their, you know, their best selves, really. So that involves um, lots of different things like managing their, their pain uh, relief medications, formulating exercise plans for them, um, looking at their nutrition and diet in quite a lot of depth, and then referring them to, um, to practices like yourselves, so hydrotherapy, physiotherapy uh, for ongoing treatments, uh, and of course, providing, providing acupuncture as well for them. So it's a multi kind of multidisciplinary and really, really rewarding and really enjoyable. And getting to know that pet and getting to know that owner as well is really, really special. So it just helps them um, build that bond and just gets the best relationship that owner can have with their pet and, and really enhance their quality of life. Oh, that's really interesting, especially because there's just um, so many conditions that obviously acupuncture can help which is really nice and, and also just to have some different options because obviously not every you know thing suits every dog so it's really good to have different, um, different options for owners that they can go and seek out which is really nice um mm -hmm. now you talked about your pain management um so obviously the chronic pain management so how, how would an owner know that their dog is in chronic pain because i think that was that's one thing that that some owners sort of struggle with. They would hate to think that any of their dogs are in pain. Um, mm -hmm. And especially sometimes, you know, if it, it might be slight pain, but how would they know if it was chronic pain? It's a really, really great question. A really difficult um, subject is chronic pain because it's so individual to that pet. Um, the signs can be so subtle. Um, dogs are very, very good at masking pain and it really takes quite a thorough um, kind of sit down with that owner with that pet to work out what behavior changes have been um, happening in that pet's life they can often be very slow and progressive and we may not notice them and often a lot of people put that down to the pet just getting old or that's just him or that's how he's always been but things um such as um not having as much energy on a walk or not quite enjoying being on a walk anymore any changes in their posture so if they've got a slightly hunched posture or if they're starting to scuff their nails when they're out on a walk um changes in their sleeping habits as well a lot of pets will um will, will be awake at night be pacing at night um sleep in different areas that they were that, that they've been used to um, not greeting their owners as happily as they normally would have done um, they can become a little bit more restless around other dogs if they were previously very kind of orientated towards um being with other dogs some dogs can become a bit more withdrawn likewise around people they may become a little bit more withdrawn or not want to be petted or groomed as much so it really takes a lot to kind of think about what was your pet like previously and how these behaviors have kind of altered um had a kind of a story that I wanted to share with you about a um he was an older golden retriever that just came in for his booster appointment and the owner happened to mention oh this he does a really strange thing that he never used to do so when he was out on his walks he would just go and stand in running water in the river and just stand there for, for quite a long time and the owners had to really coax him to come out and they they kind of thought it was quite funny at first you know he's he's just suddenly taken to do this but it transpired that his joints were really really sore and he was just standing there just to relieve himself and just to have a moment to feel quite comforted by the running water. So um, just noticing these these kind of odd or kind of idiosyncrasies would, would kind of alert us that there is there could potentially be something something the matter. And it doesn't have to just be restricted to the older dog that just the kind of the phrase, oh, he's getting old, really. It kind of disappoints me, really, because I think, well, this, it's, that's no excuse. We can do so much more. And younger dogs as well um, would certainly suffer from, from arthritic changes and from, from pain as well. So we've always got to remember that anything that can be slightly different in that dog's behavior or the way that they are could indicate that there's something the matter with them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I suppose a lot of um, the owners sort of make comments like, oh, he, you know, he's sleeping a lot more or, uh, you know, he's just really stiff when he gets out of bed. And mm -hmm. obviously arthritis is quite a big subject. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot of dogs that come in and I think some people also just think, oh, yeah, as you say, that they're just getting that little bit older. But mm -hmm. it's about that quality of life. You know, even when we're a bit older, we still want to have a good quality of life and still do yeah. all 
you know, the things we want to do. And that's what we want to do for all of our dogs, isn't it? Make sure that they are doing the best doggy life that they can. And still have all, the, all the dog things that, um, that they can do, all those snippy walks and things like that. So I think sometimes it's, like, it's just having that change of lifestyle as well, but also talking to the right people. Um, if you do notice some of these changes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I suppose that brings us to, um, you know, working with a disciplinary team, mm -hmm. like what sort of team, obviously we have quite a big team. Yeah. <laughs> team at Dog. So uh, we've got the hydrotherapists, Kate, um, our vet nurse. Um, we've also got the physiotherapist as well. So, um, and we obviously work with all of the vets. <laughs> <laughs> So um, what's your experience with working with, you know, a multidisciplinary team? Yeah, it's absolutely vital because managing pain is, um, it has so many different elements and so many different factors to it. Um, so starting at sort of the vet level, we would certainly help the owners diagnose uh, and recognise what the actual issue is um, and be able to prescribe medications and recommend exercise, lifestyle changes and, and diet plans. But then um, we also need to work together with, with the complementary side and that really augments what um, what we're trying to do with the pain relief and rehabilitation side. So it's so important that, that we all work together as a team and to be able to understand that pet and, and all kind of communicate together to say this is what's working, this isn't what it isn't good for him or, or her and um, and be able to come up with a treatment plan um, that kind of suits that pet's lifestyle, their age, their temperament. So it's it's absolutely vitally important that um, that therapists and, and vets and, and nurses all, all work together as one big team to help that pet because there's not just we can't just treat it in in one aspect it's got to be a holistic approach to um to treating pain so it's um i think we're, we're a little bit behind the times I, I find sometimes in this country with the with with that approach i mean in places like the us and i'm sure in, in new zealand as well it's kind of the um it's the norm really so once the pet has has a procedure has um a certain condition um just like we would in people it's um the, it's every single aspect is catered for so we've got to treat their muscles we've got to treat their their pain their joints and um it's a whole um holistic approach so yeah it's absolutely vital that we all all share our experiences and knowledge and, and work together i think we're starting to we're mm -hmm. we're starting we're we're starting to um, start all working together in the yeah. UK, which mm -hmm. is quite nice. Um, and I suppose for us as well, it's also what's best for the dog. So it's just sort of working together and making sure that it's like rehabilitation plan centered around the dog and mm -hmm. the owner and how we can how we can manage that and what works best for the dog as well. So if they obviously you know, aren't um, working very well in the pool and we've got the treadmill, we've got laser, you know, with acupuncture. So it's, you know, it's just making sure that what's working best for that dog. And also mm -hmm. as they transfer through that rehabilitation program, you know, that those changes are made um, mm -hmm. and move through, which is really nice. And I suppose that's really good to have everyone together as well. Yeah. <laughs> Same result, which is nice. That's it. Yeah, we've had some. Well, we've worked together on a great case, haven't we? That's um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you 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 hope to mention. <laughs> yeah, so we had soldier that came in. I he was actually in today, and I said, "Oh, <laughs> oh. he's gonna be famous." He is. He's very famous. He's incredible, <laughs> and the incredible progress that his owner and that you know that you guys have made with him is wonderful. So yeah, that's he's a, a shining example of why everyone has to work together and. Um, you know and and um like you said it's so the programs are so individualized for that that patient um and it just takes all our input to to get them to where we want want them to be and it's um it's so rewarding to see that when you know when they've started off in a place that's painful and sore and then they're enjoying life again and just so so happy to to be back on all four feet <laughs> <laughs> yeah, soldier's doing really well. So soldier yeah. came and he's been doing physiotherapy. He's in the underwater treadmill. Um, he's having, having laser as well. Um, plus he obviously has acupuncture as well. So he's definitely getting everything, yeah. <laughs> which is perfect, which is what he needs. 
he really needs it all. <laughs> and obviously lots of treats. <laughs> lots of kisses and cuddles, yeah. He's yeah. Oh, he's such a brave boy. <laughs> yeah, though he's very lovely. So what's your plans now that you're up in Yorkshire? So I'm actually, I still commute back to my, um, so I've got two jobs. I've got um, a job in Bristol as well. So I work alongside a, uh, a veterinary physiotherapist in Bristol half the week. And then mm -hmm. um, I'm at Algate um, the rest of the week. And I also do um, pe uh, pet first aid courses as well. So as lockdown eases, I'm slowly starting to to get those back on um, back on the go. And um, I just, I really enjoy just preventative care and raising awareness and things like that. So so, um, so that's the that's hopefully the plan for the next couple of months is getting, yeah, getting those courses running again and um, and continuing with the um, with with all all my work over at the uh, at, in practice. And I'm actually hoping to um, um, I'm in the, in the middle of doing a certificate in in chronic pain and um, and also in, in in rehabilitation. So just uh, just getting my study hat on as well and uh, and, and doing that. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> That's it. I know. I mean, as lockdown eases, I think, oh gosh, I don't, I don't have time to do all the social things anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you will. You'll have to make sure you book a pub. <laughs> oh, how about you? Are you what are your what are your future plans or what's? Yeah, there? so um, we're going to be adding uh, biomagnetic therapy um, as well. So that will be really nice. We've also just ordered um, a biomagnetic bed. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll be able to let um, people hire that out. So if they want to trial it um, and see if that works for their dog as well. So mm -hmm. just having different options available. So we're just adding more tools to our toolbox, mm -hmm. really. Oh, so great. and just making and um, we'll be able to offer that to our current clients as well. So mm -hmm. they're just waiting for parts from China. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that's taking a bit longer to come than I wanted but um, yeah so it's really good to be able to add more um, to what we can offer as well as mm -hmm. a whole service. Super that sounds exciting and yeah I've had really great things about the uh, about the mats so that will be a wonderful wonderful piece of equipment to have on board. Yes yeah, yeah. I mean the great thing about it that um, you know all, all dogs can you know have it so it'll be really nice yeah. to mm -hmm. help help with that yeah. Um, so yeah so that's sort of where we're going and obviously we're going to be back open on the from the 12th so mm -hmm. back to all services which Good. would be nice to have all the doggies back again all the puppies, <laughs> which are now older now <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, look, puppies coming in so we do that as well but it's really good for um puppies to come and experience especially being in the pool or in the mm -hmm. underwater mill um because what we are finding that our puppies who have done our program before are now coming back again because they've been had a cruciate injury mm -hmm. or yeah. something else has changed in their life um, but by having that experience and having good experiences as a puppy when they come back it, it's you know, it's have been here before and it's, in, it's, in a, fun place. Place. it's a, a positive place yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so um so that's really quite nice great so, to get and we just love puppy cuddles anyway <laughs> any excuse <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody um would like to ask any questions to either of us you can just pop them in the comments and we'll be able to answer some of those as they come in mm -hmm. um i know we've got some people watching so that'd be quite nice to answer mm -hmm. some some questions if they've got any any so we can add some questions mm -hmm. here i haven't got any come through yet i'm sure people are going to start typing <laughs> <laughs> oh they're too shy, don't be shy. <laughs> no don't be shy we like answering questions <laughs> i should have some more questions <laughs> Um, so at your other practice, um, mm -hmm. you have treadmill and hydrotherapy as well, or is it only physiotherapy and? Yeah, it's only physiotherapy. We do have a um, a, a machine called an iMove machine, which is a kind of a static wobble board, which is great for proprioception and just for sort of encouraging that core stability. So it's pretty pretty cool machine to have on board. So it's uh, um, we, we often have 
um, sort of the dogs that have post cruciate and uh, post post um, uh, sort of fracture repairs on on there just to help build that kind of stability and proprioception again. So that's a quite a nice piece of equipment that we've got there. And um, but no, we don't have any um, sort of any any access to the hydro or treadmill at all. Um, but we see yeah quite a lot of sort of sports cases and um, and and just general rehabilitation for mainly sort of uh, the geriatric dogs um, and so offering quite a lot of the acupuncture and the, and the physio there so it's uh, yeah it's a great great place to to work I mean it's uh, quite a drive but it's um, I do enjoy working alongside my, my other colleagues so it's um, yeah it's uh, another and, and, and also a change of scenery as well which is which is, is nice with being in lockdown we haven't obviously been able to, to get out very much so it's it's nice to be able to have have that opportunity for work as well so yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, that board sounds really interesting. Yeah, I just it's very on on the website, and I just thought I haven't seen one of those before. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's one of the only ones in the UK, and um, it's a French right. machine, so it's um, yeah, it's it's fantastic. I've been on it a couple of times as well, and it <laughs> it beats <laughs> going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. everyone quiet on the comments <laughs> oh okay i've got one from donna mm -hmm. donna's got a good one here so donna says would you recommend acupuncture for a french bulldog with spinal injury yeah absolutely i mean the acupuncture will provide pain relief not only for um sort of the nervous system for, but for the muscles um that often become quite either quite tight or very very flaccid and um, with any spinal injuries so yeah absolutely I, I would recommend that and i would um i would speak to your own vet about whether they think that your bulldog would be an appropriate patient for for acupuncture so but um, absolutely spinal injuries are um i use i use acupuncture a fair few times to, to treat spinal injuries so yes i, I would say it'd be a recommended um a modality to use yeah yeah i mean obviously i know i know kevin um <laughs> i definitely would suggest um giving acupuncture a go because i think he would actually benefit from it because obviously with muscle tension so <laughs> Kevin had um, a spinal injury from his neck. So mm -hmm. when he first came to us, he actually couldn't walk at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but now he is. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. It's amazing. He's it's doing wonderful. a great job. <laughs> and Donna is amazing because obviously um, Kevin gets everything he needs. Oh, okay. But yeah, definitely for um, any of the muscle tension and um, anything like that, I think it would it would definitely benefit. Mm -hmm. I think the nice thing about acupuncture is it's not going to harm them in any way. No, so, absolutely not. And it's amazing how um, it sounds pretty scary with the with sort of the with needles going into the body, but it's amazing how relaxed that the pet becomes, and it doesn't cause it doesn't cause pain. And um, it, it takes away pain. It kind of re-diverts pain, and um, it makes the body release its own natural painkillers. So you often find the pet is so sleepy and so sort of zonked out with it, and they really look forward to coming back again because it makes them feel really good. Good, and it just relaxes them and often owners say that wow he, he slept really well after that and um, they feel really relaxed and, and kind of zonked out with it so it's it, it is an incredible um, thing to have on board and really incredible to be able to use that to treat pain so um, yeah it would be it would be lovely to, to meet him and lovely to uh, to be able to provide some pain really extra pain relief for him as well yeah no he's doing really well <laughs> He's he's, a, he's amazing. Oh, he sounds it. You don't worry about him sleeping. Do we not? He's very chilled. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Bridget's got one um, mm -hmm. about cruise it. Um, so Max has um, got rehab plan following a surgery. He's been trying to do figure eights with him, but he's just grabbed his lead and protest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I always find um, sort of a, a, a treat reward or just using using um, part of his own diet as a as a lure to to try and get him to to gently um, 
do the, the figure of eight. Um, I don't know about you, Kirsty, but have you, do you find that do you find the, the, the food is often the way to the heart as well? <laughs> and just doing things slowly, or if they've got a favourite um, toy or um, a voice command or something that's going to make it fun and and um, and rewarding for them, and not persevering and not um, pushing them too much if they if they if they're really not wanting to do it and speaking to your I guess your physiotherapist about um about that aspect if, if they are finding it difficult because there may be something that um that they're not they're, they're trying to tell us if they're a little bit sore doing it or if they're not quite ready for it so um yeah, I'd probably go back to your physio with that one um but if if in doubt I would try a treat first as well yeah. <laughs> yes. um does like his little pig as well so we could actually um try when he comes in next to um do it with his pig um but <laughs> so um, yeah so we could try that but as you say um if he maybe is in protest we could try and do some other exercises before moving up up onto that exercise mm -hmm. um and maybe just taking it way back and back back into basics yeah. mm -hmm. um, and maybe it might be you know a good chance to just have a look at where he's Mm. walking and things like treating it a bit and seeing if yeah. there's any other things we can do. Why is he protesting? Is there something else going on first? Mm -hmm. Right, now I'll hide that one. Now we're back again. I've got no more. <laughs> right, so that's amazing. And I'm so glad to have you on here. And well, thank you so much. For oh, and cheers. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. Thank if you so much, Christine. And we weren't able to answer them. What we'll do is, we'll, if you put them in the um, the comments, we might be able to just pop back and answer those later. But yes, you're absolutely. always the most welcome to um, message us. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kirsty. Lovely to see you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for watching. <laughs> Bye. Bye.